Hi everybody. Welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Marvelous Monday. I'm Leslie Watkins. Today I'm going to be using the Enjoy the Moment stamp set and I'm going to make some of my own DSP to use to decorate a little desk organizer. So I'm getting out my, my foam stamp pad and this is just covered up with some paper to keep it neat. And I already have some scraps of crumb cake cardstock cut out and I have some soft suede ink and I'm just gonna make an all over design. And I'm, just, I'm gonna mount up a bunch of blocks so I have them ready to go. This is a brand new set. I haven't even used it yet. So this is one of the sets that's from the brand new catalog that just came out. And I'm gonna use these poppies. If you need a catalog, please let me know. Just go to my website and subscribe to Notes. I'll also have that link below after I finish filming the video. And I will send you the new mini catalog and also the celebration brochure, which has all the items that you can get for free with every $50 that you spend. Now, I'm not sure how many of these I'm going to use, but I just want to have them ready to go. And uh, when you're doing something like this, when you're making your own patterns and designs, it really helps if you have a selection of blocks. I have a lot of duplicate blocks and I use them all. All right, and then I think I've got a little tiny stamp here that just has some little seeds on it. And that will be useful. All right, and maybe one more. There we go. And I'll put this one off to the side just in case I want to have it ready. Okay, so now I have a, let's see, I have a long piece here. So I'm going to, I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this poppy stamp. And what I like about, I know these are um, based on pen and ink designs, but they almost have the effect of a woodblock print, which I really like about them. So I'm just going to put a couple of these on here. Just like that, and then I'm going to take these little, this tiny seed stamp and just fill in this space a little bit. There we go. All right, and now, so this piece is going to, this little desk organizer that I'm going to be assembling has a drawer in it 
And so I'm going to decorate the bottom of the drawer with some of these images as well. And I think I'll use this one. do this one again. There we go. And again with the with the tiny stamp, the little seeds just scatter those around. looking pretty good. Get the edges. And do one more here. All right. And I'm just going to continue like that. So this, I've got two more pieces. And this is going to be for the top. have a lot of poppy seeds that I've collected from last year that I'll be scattering around in the snow soon. They um, benefit from a period of um, stratazite. I don't even know if that's a word. They're, they're, they need to be stratified. <laughs> Stratification? I guess it's a word. Anyway, and um, what that means is, is that if the seeds are allowed to overwinter, it'll help them to germinate in the spring. So they require a uh, certain amount of time in, in freezing temperatures. So this is a good time to go ahead and, and get them started. And, uh, and I just scatter them around, and they're very pretty. They're annuals, so they grow very quickly, and they add a really nice spot of color in the garden. And there's a lot of different tones. There are the, the red ones, of course. I really like the purple ones and the lavender ones. And I also have some peach colored ones, which are gorgeous. Squeeze one in here. Okay. Do one more. And I have something that looks kind of like a lotus blossom or a lotus seed head. Get that on there. I'm getting a little bit of halos around there because I'm pressing a little bit too hard. Let's 
see. Okay. All right, so now we've got our, the beginning of our own DSP or designer series paper. So it's just as easy as that, but I'm going to take it a little bit of a step further. And I'm going to grab, let's see. I'm looking at my sponges here to see if I have a uh, crumb cake sponge. I'll use this one. This is close enough. And I'm just going to go around the edges. to re-ink this pad. There we go. And I I think it just helps to give it less of a raw look or a just cut look. It makes it a little more finished and it helps it to um, be more cohesive with the layer underneath it. It just helps it to look like it was designed to be there instead of just stuck on the top. For this, I want to I want to find the middle here of this. So let's see what we've got. Give it a quick measure. Oops, wrong way. There we go. So that's five and a quarter. So right here is the center mark, and I'm just going to, I have a one inch punch, and I'm going to notch out a little half circle, and give that a little sponging as well. All right. Now, I do want to add a little bit of an accent to that. Sorry for getting my head in the way. You don't need to be looking at the top of my head. Um, I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab one of my daubers. This one looks pretty close. And I'm, I'm going to give a little more a little more shading to some of these pods just a touch and it doesn't matter if you go outside the lines it's just a it's just for a an added effect There we go. OK. 
Okay. Just get in there a little better. Just adding a little bit extra to the corners. There we go. So I think that's, oh, one more. I forgot one. Let's use, for this piece, I need something uh, a little bit smaller. Let's try this. One that I'm going to punch out so I don't need to get too elaborate on it. Okay, that's it for the for the soft suede, and now I have my the whisper white craft ink refill, and I'm just going to add a couple of drops onto my block over here. And I'm going to give that a little spritz of water just to dilute it slightly. And then with a brush, I have an old water brush here. I'm just going to add Couple of touches here and there. I'm going to need my paper towels. A little too wet. Okay, so just a couple of little highlights here and there. And this is going to dry a little bit darker than how it looks when it's wet. So that just gives it a little more dimension, a little more form.
I think you can see how, how that's already drying much duller than when it's first applied. And that's okay. We're just looking for a subtle effect here. Just sticking with, with neutrals today. This is, this is actually a, um, a prototype and the, um, the original box was made by Lee Denton. And I've just made a couple of little changes and I will be modifying it a little bit more. And I will be offering a special box workshop. And this will be an example of one of the things that you can do once you've honed your box making skills. But it's very cute. I think you're going to like it. I don't know which I like better, the, the poppy pods or the flowers. It's such a great plant to grow because it gives you very fast results in the garden. It helps to fill in gaps and add color. And then, of course, the, the pods make such great additions to your winter dried flower arrangements. There we go. We're almost there. There we go. This is our last piece. Oh, we did this one already. Okay. Alright, so I guess we're done with the highlighting. Just want to add a little more texture to these kind of horse chestnut looking seed pods. Okay. All right. So there is our painting done. Almost. <laughs> there we go. Get 
these stems as a bit of a highlight. All right, now we're going to assemble. So um, I just want to make sure I don't let this white dry on the brush because I don't know if this is a, an acrylic or if it's a watercolor, but it does seem to dry hard, so I don't want to take the chance. So just give that a quick wipe, put it away. And this piece, I'm going to punch. This is the Timeless Label Punch. I'm just going to find an area that I like. That looks pretty good. And then I also have ready to go some pieces. So let's see. Let me get organized here. That's the bottom of the drawer. Oh. I still have to sponge the uh, edges of this, so let's do that very quickly. There we go. Okay, so what I have here, and all of these measurements will be available in a PDF on my, um, in my next edition of Notes. So if you'd like to get the measurements and instructions and a free PDF app of this project, please subscribe to Notes at dandelioncottagedesign.com, and I will also be including that information down below. Now I'm just missing a piece. Hang on a second. It fell on the floor. So this is this is a piece of early espresso that's been punched out of the timeless with the timeless label punch. But what I've done is I've laminated it so it's actually three layers. I want this to be nice and strong. And I'm going to adhere this piece that I just made to the top of that. This is going to act as a little stopper. So um, it's, it's good and strong. It's as thick as a piece of chipboard now. And just give that a minute to set up. In the meantime, I'm going to begin to assemble my organizer. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some glue on the tabs, like so. Um, I want to make sure that my corner is nice and square. Just hold that for a moment. These flaps are going to go on the inside this time. I'm just going to fold. 
fold that in. There we go. Give that a burnish, my bone folder. is going to be my drawer. So again, I'm applying glue to the tabs. Double check all my corners. This is a, a reinforced drawer, so um, it should hold up over time to the, to the pulling and keep its shape. Okay, now I just want to add a little bit of glue to my front and back panels, or flaps I guess they would be. Give that a good burnish. Now for this drawer, let me just get that started. I've added an additional little flap that's going to adhere to the bottom of the box and that's going to make this extra strong because this is going to be a moving part so I want to make sure it's got plenty of attachments there we go That a little shape. Okay, now that's going to slide right in 
to our base here like that. But before we do anything, I want to once again find that center. So that would be there. I'm going to give that another punch. All right. And then I'm going to take my drawer front. This is going to go right here. And I need, I can see I need to trim that down a tiny bit. Okay. I'm going to trim it slightly so that it, I have a nice reveal around the sides. It's a little skinny piece now, so it's just... There we go. That looks good. Okay, now one of these pieces is my drawer bottom. So that's going to fit inside there like so. decide which way I want this to go. I think I like it like that. So with with all of the reinforcements on the sides of the drawer, and the addition of the liner uh, at the bottom and those uh, extra flaps plus plus the front piece this is now a really nice and sturdy drawer so this this should be able to um, withstand a lot of pushing and pulling and have a have a, a decent lifespan and I just want to make sure that I have those all of these edges nice and smooth where, where the crease is and it is, and that's just a, a really nice sturdy drawer. And that of course will fit in there like so, sort of matchbox style. But you can see, this is pretty flimsy, okay? So this is just a single layer of cardstock, so we need to reinforce this now. So let me just clear some of this stuff out of the way. that a 
that a little burnish. There we go. Okay. So what I what I've done is I've cut a top and a bottom piece of cardstock and I laminated these as well. So each of these is two layers thick. So they're quite sturdy. And what that's going to do, let me get that in there. It's going to give us a really nice firm base both on the the bottom and the top of the drawer so I'm going to get plenty of glue on there because the glue is going to further help to stiffen this up and this base is a is a tiny bit bigger than the drawer itself, so it has a little bit of a uh, overhang, which is just a nice touch. There we go. Let's do the other side. Plenty of glue. centered on there nicely. Okay. That looks pretty good. Alright, so now we have a very sturdy base that will hold our drawer nicely. Okay, so that's looking pretty cute already. This would actually be useful just as it is, but we're going to add something else to it. I want to make sure I get into all of these corners and get that adhered really well. Here we go. Okay. And that little finger hole allows us to get in there and pull the, pull the drawer out. All right, now I have another piece. This is going to give us the easel top. All right, and this is also going to further reinforce the top of our box here. So it's now um, when I once I adhere this, this is going to be three layers thick here. But actually, you know what? Before before I adhere that, I want to I want to decorate this a little bit. So I have my pieces of. the stamp paper I just made. I decide which way I want this pattern to be. I think like that.
centered on there. Now this piece I'm going to have to cut. All right, so let's see. The front is two. The back is two also. Okay, so that's that makes it easy. Let me just see how much wiggle room I have here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this at a little bit less than two. So just about a sixteenth less. And then I'm going to, oopsie, I didn't do that right. Okay, that was a bad one. That was a bad cut, so let's just do it this way. So this is now one and a half. So I'll just trim this down to one and a half to match. You can always, always fix it, folks. Don't worry about making a little mistake. So there we go. But I have to... Now sponge those edges again. Let's see which way I had this. Something like that. That looks good. and square. Okay. All right. Give this a good burnish.
you don't have a phone, a, a bone folder, you need one. It's probably my single most used tool, that along with the trimmer and the snips, my paper snips. And I will also include a link to an essential tools list and how to and how you can purchase them. So that's that's how this little organizer is going to work. It's got a drawer below. And then I'm going to take this little stopper that I made, and I'm going to adhere that right there. And, and for this, I'm going to be using dimensionals, and I'm gonna put plenty on there. So I'll put one, one in each, and and then four in the middle. There we go. I want to center this. Let's see, I'm going to put it this way. So I'm just going to line that up with the edge of the paper there. And that's going to hold our easel top. And you may be wondering, well, why do you want to have an easel top? Well, I'll show you. Hang on, I have to go get it. I have a little calendar that can be adhered to the to the front of the piece here, like so, and I'm not going to put this on just yet because I haven't finished designing the box and I may want to put a bigger piece on the top here and, and mount the calendar all around with a nice matching Order as I have here. But for today, I just wanted to give you an idea of how you could make the beginning of a nice little desk organizer. And in it, you could store all sorts of things. This one actually fits a large post-it note perfectly, so you could put one of those in there. You could keep your Wink of Stella in there, your ink eraser, your glue eraser. So as you can see, it holds quite a lot and it's very sturdy and very pretty. And you can decorate that any way you like to match your, your desktop using your favorite papers, or, or as I did, make your own. Okay, so thank you so much for watching today. 
I hope this has given you some ideas. I hope you'll give it a try. And if you'd, if you'd like to get the instructions with all the measurements on how you can make this exact version, just go to dandeliancottagedesign.com, sign up for my newsletter, and I'll be sending out a free PDF with all the information about how you can make one of these. So, so thank you for joining me. Stay well, stay happy, stay creative, and I will see you next time.